Yeah. Over here. Oh, look at this place. I guess someone was... It's like a bedroll and a pile of... Is that bones? Or some sort of carapace? Look at that. Cannibals. Maybe fed the subjects to each know. other? <laughs> I don't know. The Walking Dead makes me think like any time you see that, it's just cannibals. And as established, he has what appears to be some sort of... Some sort of summoning portal or sacrificial altar or something occult in his medical lab here. Awesome. I mean, that's what you look for in a good doctor. Well, in the Shadowrun universe, it might be. Okay, now, remember the revelations from last time? About the, uh... Well, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, here's some people. Man. Male Bunraku. Oh, remember that about the Bunraku? In the notes we found? Yes. Bunraku is a type of Japanese puppet. <laughs> and they're like they're like mind controlled slaves, basically. His chip slot right. his chip slot is still fresh. The opened wound pink and wet and lurid. His voice drips innuendo, but his eyes say nobody's home. Male Bunraku. Well, hello there. Did you come to play? You okay? How long have you been here for? How long have you been here? Of course we're okay female Bunraku. Of course we're okay. We're ready for a little party. You want to have a little party with me? By your name? <laughs> no, that's what it said. No, remember, these, these people are, like, pre-programmed. Right, right. No, I know. I think he even talked about, like, I think in the, some of the notes he even talks about, like, setting up the, the, you know, like, the various decision trees and so forth. Yeah. She's assembled in a standard... Game AI. <clears throat> What's that? I said not unlike the game <laughs> AI. She's assembled in a stand standard config. Face of a schoolgirl, body of a stripper. You need some thick beer goggles to miss the work she's had done. The puppet stares blankly at you. I guess I thought I remember there being more to... more you could do with the... Oh, wait, maybe... Hey, oh, there's something visible over here. Item picked up. Persona fix chip wiper. Oh, we can summon Personas now! Nice. Now, I believe the Persona Fix chips... When's the, uh... I wonder, who Fla I wonder who Flandry's Persona would be. Hmm. Okay. All right, here it is. We can use the... I have to think about we, it. We can use that ch chip eraser on the Bunraku. Erase the... Will that free them? M maybe. It'll, like, it, it'll... It, it'll like I think it'll like it'll erase it'll erase the implanted personality that's saying you know hey by your name. Let's try it. Ah. Erase Holmes's programming. His eyes focus and his hand raises slowly to touch his head wound. The fingers come away wet and sticky. Panic twitches at the corner of his mouth as he surveys the room. First you, then the girl, and then down to his own body, which is no longer his. Sweet Jesus, what did he do? Where am I? He begins weeping, his body racked in great, inconsolable, heaving sobs. I was going to say, he's much calmer than, uh, the, than I'd expect anybody could be. Well, it's kind of settling in. Can you not free the lady? I don't know, maybe there's something I missed? But I want to look around a little more. You made him visibly depressed, and she's still standing there. <laughs> yeah. It's possible we missed something. Although I don't know. In the interest of keeping the let's play moving, we should probably. If if yeah. there is, I don't. Rem if there is a way, I don't remember. But yeah, there's there's some screwed up shit in the Shadowrun universe. Yeah, clearly. Oh. Where is 
more to discover here. Cells. Got a little shower. Desks. A couple of desks. TV inside a cage. Doesn't appear to be a bed. Maybe they sleep on... Oh, wait, no, there it is. It's kind of partly obscured by the wall. Ah. Well, shall we depart? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know what you were waiting. Shannon Half Sky. As you approach the exit, you realize that Shannon lingers quite a few steps ba behind. Looking back, you see that she is half turned, looking pensively towards the horror show of Holmes's lab. Finally, feeling your eyes on her, she faces you and raises her head in a proud, almost defiant manner. We have done much good here tonight. We have removed two vile creatures from the world, and so ended a growing shadow they cast upon the city. Our paths crossed and joined, and we did this thing together. But now here our paths must divide. Let's see. Hmm. You saw what I saw? This isn't over yet. No, it won't be over for some time to come. A distant cry of pain echoes down from somewhere above, and the young shaman pauses to listen to the tortured sound. There's still more work to be done, for both of us. But, but what, what must be done differs, for each of us. I came here to find justice for my brother, and that has been done. His spirit can now rest in peace, can now find rest. There are other victims of the Ripper, both alive and dead, who will struggle to be at peace. Many of them are here in this place, filling the halls with their torment. I cannot leave them behind. But the spirits have something else in store for you. Hmm. Let's see, we are talking about, like, what are we going to do about that? Maybe she's going to help those people out. But the spirits have something else in, sto oh, okay. in store for you. A different path. You must finish what you've begun. You must confront the first evil that fostered the one we have just ended. <laughs> you realize most of the poor <laughs> bastards in this place won't appreciate your effort, right? I do not do it for... <laughs> Flandry's an asshole. We've kind of established that, haven't we? Yeah. I do not do it for their gratitude, but because it is a mercy I can offer. Because of you, my brother's killer has met swift justice. And justice of the only sort of such, such a man as Holmes deserved. Death. I will now set to the task of healing those he has left behind. For every madman we faced here tonight, there are a dozen innocent souls crying out in need. The spirits of the departed will also need help in passing, or else they fear that they may become like those we met in the hangar. They all deserve my help. And what about Lone Star? They can't be far behind. When they enter the room back there, they will have no thoughts other than thoughts of promotion. With the Ripper in hand, my brother will be forgotten, along with all the other victims. And so too will I. They will not be a problem. Whether that's true or not, Shannon's confidence and very presence seem capable of making it true. Good luck to you, Flandry. I hope you can find the same justice for your friend that I found for my brother. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, she's not going to be coming with us. She has to go now. Her planet needs us. Okay, so she... <laughs> Is she... So she's gone forever. We can't even hire her back. No, I don't think so. Alright. Damn. Here we go. Loose ends. The ride back to the Seamstress Union is quiet compared to the pandemonium left behind at Mercy Mental Hospital. Lone Star Squad cars pass you on the road, sirens blaring, no doubt in response to the aftermath of your showdown with the late Dr. Henry Holmes. The Emerald City Ripper. The, or the, ma the man who violently repossessed the internal organs of Sam and Jessica's mother, Melinda Watts. Remember that about the order to have her body dug up? Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's what that was? Well, it, it, yeah, it got mentioned earlier that there was a b order to have her body uh, exhumed. Right. Um. And, uh. And although the killer is dead and his grip on the city is broken, it's clear he wasn't working alone. There are loose ends aching to be tied. The taxi turns onto Redmond Way, cruising past a now familiar landmark until the Seamstress Union, in all its decadent, seedy glory. 
Oh, until the seamstress union, in all its decadent, seedy glory, materializes between swipes of the, of the overworked windshield wipers. Time to evaluate your next move. The union is, oh, the union is quiet this afternoon. The salary men and wage slaves haven't migrated from nearby offices and suburbs to dabble in the exotic yet. There he is. Oh, okay, cool. oh Johnny Clean. Oh. Mr. Clean. I like this guy. Johnny Clean is talking with Cherry Bob and Mrs. Kubota when you walk up. We're just a talk we were just talking about you, Flandry. Ah, Cherry Bob. And the Emerald City Ripper. Ironic that you tracked a serial killer to a mental hospital. Johnny Clean told us where you're going, oh my. We have been waiting for you to return. Oh, we have an option etiquette, Shadow Runner. I thought you knew better than that, Johnny. Johnny frowns and nods. You're right. I should have kept my mouth shut. I should know better. It's just that we have a personal stake in the Ripper murders. Kubota. We each have our reason for wanting the killer found. Sam was a regular here, and his loss has been felt, regardless of his shortcomings. The whole sprawl has been shaken by these killings as well, the randomness of them. No one knows if they will be next or what the killer might take from them. I admit that the killings have hampered business as well. I'm sorry, but it is true. It does not help that Sam's body was found down the street from here. Even my regular customers have been loath to venture out with a killer on the loose. Now tell us, oh my, did you find the person responsible for the Gripper murders? Not exactly. I got the bastard who wielded the scalpel, but whoever's pulling the strings is still out there. Somebody's pulling the strings of a serial killer. <coughs> this sounds more complicated than I suspected. Okay, well, alright. It is. Well, that's a lot. The head of the asylum was killing specific people to harvest specific body parts. All of the transplanted organs came from the same donor, Melinda Watts, Sam's mother. It looked like he was putting her back together. The three are silent as the news sinks in. So, Sam had an organ transplanted from his mother, and then the Ripper killed Sam and all those other people just to reassemble Sam's mother? <laughs> Grizzly, isn't it? I sense a cause and effect in this. Coyote and Jake just left here to attend Sam's funeral. I'm told that there will be a, a I'm told that there will be a reinterment ceremony for his mother as well. That's interesting. Reinterment. Oh. His sister invited me to the funeral and the and the reinterment when I met her there. Oh, the other was just right. A reinterment ceremony. Interesting. Now. The question arises, how does Sam's sister have the body to reinter when it was dug up by the good doctor back there? Mm. Is that not something we can ask? Um, well, I just mentioned the sister. Yeah. Think his, uh. think his sister Jessica had something to do with it? Hang on. I saw Sam's sister when she was here the other day. She was as corp as they come, but I can't imagine a lady like that behind a series of murders. There's got to be something else going on. Remember how un how uninterested in, in having the killer brought to justice she was? Yeah. She really didn't want didn't want us following the case. She did not. It's clear that you must go to the funeral and talk with Jessica Watts, Flandry. I will gonna get some answers. I'm sure you will. Miss Kubota raises her hand and the conversation stops. Wait, wait. Before you go, there's one thing you did not tell us, Landry. Where is the Emerald City Ripper now? <laughs> there's three choices, all of which I like. Decomposing? I think you know where. Or, well, he isn't in heaven, I'm sure of that. <laughs> which, which, what, which should I do? I think that one's good. What's that? He isn't in heaven, I'm sure of that. Uh, that one's a good one. Hi, that is good. 